Now, oil prices are in volatile trading, not surprisingly, bearing in mind the OPEC agreement that's just been reached. Brent's higher for the day. Look at the way Brent and West Texas both ended up. They've been bouncing around, though. OPEC Plus, it's a historic deal to cut oil production by 9.7 million barrels a day. Too little, too late, say some but it will offset the huge drop in consumption. Antoine Half is the chief analyst at the energy data provider. Uh, Cariossi joins me now. All right, so the U.S. president tweeted that he saw it as being 20 million barrels a day. Have you got any idea what he's talking about and where this 20 million barrels comes from? Well, I think what he's talking about is a very big number. Um, a very forceful uh, measure. And I think what he's talking about is a degree of uh, endorsement for production cuts that we've never seen from the U.S. before. A degree of legitimacy or legitima legitimization of OPEC that was that is really unprecedented. Right. Now, how this how works out exactly, does... practice, we don't really know for sure, right? Uh, how does the U.S offer production cuts, bearing in mind it's a, an, on an individual basis. So when the U.S. offered, so, for example, to take up some of Mexico's cuts, I don't understand how they actually do it in a market-driven economy. This is all uncharted territory. So the U.S. used to be the market regulator back in the 1970s and before. Uh, hasn't been in 50 years. So this is very unclear. It's unclear what authority the federal government has to regulate production. It's unclear even how the states could do it. The state presumably can do it. But would they have the political support to do it? Would it be technically feasible on short notice? That's a, that's a very big question. But I think we're seeing the response already happening from industry. And at Carol's, we're detecting, we're tracking activity in the shale pads, uh, for example. And we're seeing a massive drop in uh, in frac spreads uh, in the in the number of frac right. crews that are active in the shale basins. Nine point seven million barrels out at the moment. That's a huge amount. Do you believe if the, if prices start to rise again? Do you believe that OPEC and OPEC Plus can maintain those levels of cuts or? There is so much dissent or potential dissent that the agreement won't last much beyond this crisis. You know, these, these are very uh, exceptional circumstances, so they require very forceful, exceptional action. And I think the action is, is happening. But the agreement is not really about getting the price back up and the market, you know, growing back in positive territory. The, the, the measures, the, the meeting that took place between the OPEC plus partners and the G20, it's really about damage control. It's really about not crashing into the storage capacity wall. There's a, there was a concern that there was not enough storage capacity in the world to accommodate the oversupply as a result of the, the, the collapse in demand due to the coronavirus right. outbreak. So what this does is really slow down the pace of, of inventory builds and diminish the risk of bumping against, of crashing against this capacity wall. Right. We're going to have, it's not going to be enough to offset the demand reduction. It's not going to push the price back up right now, but it will limit the, the damage and reduce the risk of, of really getting to zero pricing or negative pricing. Good to sort you. Thank you, sir, making sense of this deal. I appreciate it.